All right, welcome. In this work example, we're taking a look at a sample of a radioactive isotope emitting a beam of beta minus radiation. The first one says, state the change, if any, to the number of neutrons in a nucleus of the sample that emits a beta minus particle. So what's happening to the neutrons if we're getting beta minus radiation? Well, that's where we've got a neutron becoming a proton. That's beta minus particle, you got an anti-neutrino. So a neutron is, is uncharged, right? So I always think about, well, it's kicking out a negative charge. And so what remains behind is gonna be sort of a positive charge there. And so if we think that the neutron transmutes to a proton, then for every beta minus particle that's emitted, we're going down, we're decreasing the neutron number by one. The nucleon number stays the same, right? Because nucleons are both of these. We just change one for the other. So, you don't want to, you know, sort of realize that an answer to this question would be like decreases by one. You probably already have this, you know, reaction in your notes. So you don't need to get it again, just sort of you need to study it. So you'd be able to answer a question like this. What happens to neutron number in beta minus decay decreases by one. Now, part B here is a chance to review another bit of physics. And even sort of more than that, because, you know, we have to calculate the current. It says in... And I don't know if anybody can read this. Does anybody know what this metric prefix lowercase p stands for? Either the word that it stands for or the order of 10, even better. If you know, leave it down in the comments below. So you should have a page in your journal with all the metric prefixes that are sort of relevant to this course and the order of 10 that they represent. Um, if you find that page in your notes, or maybe it's on like the inside cover or something like that, it's important enough. Let's just really quickly go through this. So Terra, Giga, Mega, Kilo, and then you got sort of the base unit, and then we go lower than one, we want to know about, you know, Centi, Milli, uh, Micro, Nano, and then this one, Pico. So kilo, 10 to the three, mega, 10 to the six, giga, 10 to the nine, tera, 10 to the 12, okay? Centi, 10 to the negative two, right, 100. Milli, 10 to the negative three, micro, 10 to the negative six, nano, 10 to the negative nine. So pico is gonna be 10 to the negative 12. It's kind of go by threes. So pico is a trillion, even smaller than nano, a billion. They give us the time, the number of beta minus particles, and we have to calculate the current. Does anybody know what the equation for current is? Or what is a current? Current is the rate of flow of charge, right? So you got a moving charge, you got a current. Usually we move charges in wires, but here we just got a beam of particles, right? Like a beam of, you know, electrons. And so that's a, that's a current too, right? They could be moving on wires, they could be moving through air, through vacuum, whatever. Intensity of the current equals charge per time. We have to calculate the charge though. All we know is the number of particles. How, how much charge is there if we've got this many particles? Does anybody know the charge on a beta minus particle? So if we call this N, the number of particles, what's the charge on each one? N E buddy know? N E? Buddy, no. It's like a, it's like, a, like N E. Buddy, no. It's e elementary charge. It's a, it's an electron, so it's got the same charge as an electron. Elementary charge E. So we know the number. It's a lot. Nine point eight by ten to the ten, and each one has a charge of. Yeah, I'm talking to you, YouTube. Leave it down in the comments below. Of course, you know, elementary charge is 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Over the time, who wants to plug in two for the time? Exactly. 120 seconds, that's two minutes. A coulomb per second is an amp. So when we solve this, we're not going to have picoamps. We're going to have amps. But we know down here, 
or you know from your notes, you've got a complete list of all the relevant metric prefixes, pico is a trillion. So solve it in amps and then we'll convert it. All right, some of my YouTube viewers forgot their calculator. Don't worry guys, I got you on the screen so you can see it calculated in front of you. Let's tidy up some of that. Now that we know where those numbers came from, so we got 9.8 by 10 to the 10 beta minus particles. Each one has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So the total charge is going to be that. <clears throat> Spread out over 120 seconds gives us the current of 1.31 times 10 to the negative 10. So that's amps. So to go from amps to pico amps, again, you can either think about like, well, pico means 10 to the negative 12. So you could put a 10 to the negative 12 down here in the denominator and say like, oh, there's 10 to the negative 12 amps in one pico amp. So you're dividing by 10 to the negative 12. You could divide this by a trillion. And let me tell you something that's deeply profound and it might blow your mind here. Dividing by a trillion is the same thing as multiplying by a trillion. Let it sink in. Dividing by a trillion is the same thing as multiplying by a trillion. And I just prefer to multiply by a trillion. You know, you can divide by a trillion if you like. Times one. My calculator, I can, I can do it in standard form. I was bragging a little bit about that earlier today. Ready? You try typing that many zeros in your calculator. You can't do it. So we get this answer. 130.6 repeating. And here's where we have to be mindful of significance. Okay. Some students would look at this and go, well, that's more than 0.5. It's going to round up to 131. And they'd incorrectly report the current as 131 pico amps. That is the correct rounding, but it's not the correct significant digits. So if you think about, well, I should only report my answer to two significant digits, even though this does round up to 131, you then look at that and say, okay, yeah, 130.6, that rounds up to 131. But then I say, okay, well, I only can report two significant digits. So it's better to round it to 130. There's 130 pico amps in that beam of beta minus particles. So you got this nucleus that's just undergoing this decay so that every two minutes it's getting 9.8 by 10 to the 10, you know, beta minus particles. So it's a really tiny current, right? It's only, you know, pico amps. The question then goes on to ask, uh, suggest why the beta minus particles are emitted with a range of kinetic energies. If we consider this equation up here, this nuclear reaction, we don't just get a beta minus particle, but we also get, you know, this anti-neutrino. And it's sort of like, um, you know, momentum has to be conserved. So if you have, for example, a stationary nucleus and it emits a beta minus particle, it could be that the, the rest of the nucleus moves in the other direction, you know, a little bit. The anti-neutrino has its, you know, kinetic energy. So because these reactions are, are you know, spontaneous and random, um, the anti-neutrino isn't going to always have, you know, the same amount of energy. So there's going to be a range of energies as these sort of, you know, reactions go. Um, I think the, the easiest way to sort of make sense of that is to consider this reaction. And that, well, there's other particles there, right? And they're going to have sort of different amounts of kinetic energy. So the total you know, sort of momentum will be conserved. The total energy is conserved, but each beta minus particle, you know, if you've compared them, you'd find that there's a range of kinetic energies there. So just kind of putting that in your own words. All right. So trying to do one more uh, example today, but that's a good one for a worked example for not just radioactivity and a review of beta minus decay, but a good 
current electricity review to remind ourselves what, you know, current is the rate of flow of charge. And it's not always, you know, electrons moving in wires. It could be a beam of electrons being emitted from a radioactive isotope. This is Dr. Schleitz, still living the physics life. We'll see you next time.